bit. Has anyone ever noticed that the bride march sounds awfully similar to the funeral march? Just saying. Hey there everyone, my name's Megan if you're new here and if not, welcome back for episode 2 of Weirdo Wednesday where I will get dressed up or dressed down in my PJs and we'll have a drink and just celebrate the fact that you're almost halfway through the week. You've only got Thursday, Friday and then you're done. If you like anything to do with true crime or supernatural or spookiness, please hit the subscribe button as I am also here on a Friday with Killer Weekend which I'll discuss a true crime each week with you guys and you guys can get involved in the discussion in the comments box below. If you also like spooky content, please feel free to follow my Instagram at Megan True Crime. I also have a TikTok at Megan.TrueCrime. We'll have a little sip sip. And for anyone wondering what I'm drinking this evening, it's a stunning 20... Oh, I'm already drunk. I'm like knocking this over. <laughs> it's a stunning 2014 beautiful Malibu with orange. Mm. And if you're wanting to make this beautiful cocktail, all you need is Malibu and orange. That's it. So without further ado, we will get into this week's question and answer of Ask Me Anything. You guys can ask me anything. It will be on my stories on Instagram each week where you can ask any questions you want and I will read them out within reason. Don't be a freak. You're out there. There's some of you, you know who you are. So, question number one was, what's your favorite scary movie? Oh, there's so many. Like, I love horror. Anything to do with horror, Halloween, anything creepy, anything that goes bump in the night, I am into that. And, oh, I don't know, because I would normally say, with me, it's a tie in between Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street just because the sheer fact of they're the ones I really remember watching like at the age of like six and seven and my crazy auntie would let me watch these things because she was literally like five years older than me so she used to just put them on and you just have to have to man up and suck it up. I'll say just for the sheer fact it's the first one I watched Nightmare on Elm Street. I'll go, go with old scissor fingers. Question number at all. What was your makeup look when you were 14? Wowzer. So, I looked horrific at 14. Makeup? Makeup? What makeup? We literally had fake tan wipes at the age of 14. And I remember I went on a class trip to Belgium and I brought these new fake tan wipes with me because I already get a tan, but during the winter months, my other sallow skin people, you'll all get this too. You just go a weird shade of gray. The minute the sun dries right up, just go a weird shade of gray. And I don't know what it is. Anyone with olive skin like me totally has the same issue. It, we don't go pale, we just go from tanned to gray. That's it, there's no in between. So as a 14 year old, I thought, I know how to solve this. I'll go to Boots Chemist and spend four pounds on these expensive fake tan wipes. So this was before the time of tan and mitts and the fact you had to wear gloves. No one really understood what these things did. So I took these on the trip and used them on the last night of the trip. Safe to say there was a disco at the last night of the trip. And I was like, an oompa loompa. I was so orange. I had complete dark brown hands. They were not acceptable. My hands were literally black. It just did not look like a good look. I would probably say at the age of 14, it wasn't so much bad makeup as anything. It was more the beauty regimen that we used to go through. Also, at the age of 16, Dream Matt Moose came into play and boy, wasn't that a game changer. Question. Three. We're getting deep with this one. What's one thing you wish you never did or said to someone? Hmm. I don't really know because I don't really believe in like regretting things because I believe what ifs are the devil and if you live with what ifs in your mind it can really mess you up and there's nothing I really truly regret. I think everything in my life ended up how it should. Yeah there was things probably I shouldn't have said to people. I was a little bit of a bitch when I was like 15, 16. Probably there was things that I learned now that I'm a bit older but yeah I wouldn't really say I regret anything that I've said or that I've done. Um, maybe a couple of tattoos that I got but that's yeah nah I don't really have any regrets. Question number four. Have you ever been arrested? No I have not. I have been picked up by the police 
when I was drinking illegally and they dropped me off at my friend's house. So we're all good. Never been arrested. And finally, number five, have you ever heard of John Wayne Gacy? Yes, like every true crime person, I have heard of John Wayne Gacy. However, it's quite an extensive one. I need at least like a full week of not filming to research it. So I think I would probably do it if I'm going on holiday. Kidding myself that I'm going on holiday this year. It's a really, really busy one and there's a lot of victims. So I just want to do it justice. But definitely there's two that I'm really wanting to do um, just above that one. I want to do the John Bonet Ramsey case because it, I've had so many requests for it. And it's a case that me and my family grew up with. So 100%. I want to do the Jean Bonnet Ramsey case. And then another case I really want to do is Kendrick Johnson, who was a young boy who was found dead rolled up in a gym mat. Uh, I have a lot to say about that one, but I just wanna make sure I do it the right time on my YouTube channel and that it gets the attention that it deserves. But thank you so much for your questions. Most of your questions were okay. Some of them were woo, a bit out there, but definitely make sure you check that out on my Insta story. It should be every kind of Tuesday, Wednesday. So just keep an eye on that and I'll make sure I get those questions in. So without further ado, we'll get into this week's topic. I keep going to say case because I'm so used to doing that every Friday, but it's not a case topic. Like I discussed last week on my Friday episode, we will be talking about ghostly brides and ghost brides. So the reason I wanted to do this one was because if you don't know me personally or this is your first time tuning in, I am newly engaged and I'm planning a wedding during a pandemic. And can I just say that if you're planning a wedding right now, good on you because you're handling a lot of stuff. And it's not just that. I feel like before you plan a wedding, if you're immature, like me, very immature, you will grow the up when you're planning a wedding. Like if there's ever a time for you to feel like more of a child, it's when you're planning a wedding. You feel like you're this like 16 year old and why is someone asking you to make all these decisions? But yeah, it's not all bad. Obviously there's bits of it that are really fun. I'm super excited to kind of involve you guys. I wanted to check with you guys as well if you would be interested in any kind of vlogs, personal vlogs with me regarding planning my wedding and the process of planning the wedding, just to see if it's anything you guys would be interested in. It will be quite an alternative wedding. I like a bit of gothic, I like a bit of vampire-esque, I like a bit of Halloween. So yeah, if it's something you guys would be interested, please let me know in the comments below. I would make a separate channel for that, just so that it doesn't get interfering in with my crime channel, but I'd let you guys know if it's something you are interested in. So without any more chit chat from me, we will dive right into the first ghostly occurrence. Whilst I was researching ghost brides, two cases actually came to my attention that were super recent and within the UK, which is terrifying if you're in the UK. The first case it takes us to Aintree in Merseyside in England and it's about a woman who was apparently captured on someone's CCTV footage that they have in place for their dogs. So the couple have two young French bulldogs and they have kind of like a nanny cam so that they can watch the dogs and see if they're getting into any bother in the house. Also, if you've been watching the news recently, you know that a lot of French bulldogs and chihuahuas have been getting stolen around the UK by dog theft rings, if that's a thing. And people have just been a little bit more concerned with their security. Darren Pallister and his fiance Jessica Mason were awoken at around 3am by an alert on one of their phones. Darren was the first one to wake up with the alert and it said that there had been movement on one of the motion censored cameras downstairs. He, like any normal guy got a bit of a fright and decided to go on and check what the activity was but he could not believe his eyes when at first he saw nothing nothing on the camera and as the camera went from 12:33, it flicked to 12:34, and this is what appeared in their dining room as you can see it's the shape of a woman and she appears to have they said that they think she looks blonde i actually think she looks dark haired but let me know maybe it's one of those gold dress blue dress things i just can't see a blonde in it they also said that she appears to be wearing a white wedding gown now the gown does look white but it doesn't appear to be a veil or anything like that it just appears to be a kind of old timey kind of high neck outfit and they said as quick as she arrived on the footage she completely disappeared. He said that for a couple of seconds she stared out of what would be their French doors, their patio doors, and then she was gone. 
with no trace. He woke up his partner next to him because he thought maybe it was her, maybe she was sleepwalking. And then she said that she'd been asleep the entire time. And then when he went downstairs to check it out to make sure no one had broken in and a woman hadn't got into the house, he said that downstairs was completely empty and their two little dogs were fast asleep. The couple are fairly new to the home and they have said that since moving in, they've experienced a couple of paranormal experiences. Dad and himself is quite a man's man and he says that he'll often stay up late at night playing his PlayStation. When he's playing the PlayStation, he said that he sometimes can smell a waft of really strong perfume, very floral. And he says it reminds him of perfume that his gran or his mum used to wear. So, you know, maybe she's just popping in to say, get to your bed and stop playing your game, son, you're a grown man. I'm speaking with a bit of bitterness because my partner's up to like 3 a.m. playing his PS every night. So fun. <laughs> Cheers. The couple said that they often felt like someone was watching them in the house, but they never got a feeling that it was a bad thing watching them. They said that it was quite a kind of calming spirit and that nothing really bad had ever happened in the home. They did check it up with their landlord because they think that this is a ghost of someone who's possibly died in the house or on the land. The landlord said that there was no note of anyone who had passed away, but obviously they only really need to give the families like three years notice here. So really, he could just be making that up. And because they were so interested in this kind of thing, they've now decided to go to a local historian to try and find out the history of the home. The two have since been contacted by several paranormal investigators who want to come in and assess the house, but they've not taken anyone up on their offer as far as I'm aware. And this was back in January 2nd, 2020. 21 so maybe they're not maybe they're not as convinced that this ghost is as real as they say it is there's also other things that are a little bit meh Dan himself, the homeowner, actually said that he had to mess with the contrast on his phone on the image to try and get it clearer so that it appeared like a person. So the before image is a little bit more grainy. I don't think they've ever released that image. In the after image, you can clearly see the shape and the face of a woman. However, is this a hoax? Will we ever know? I know they can tell if images have been doctored, but technology's so good these days, can they even tell if something's been changed on the image? So hopefully they will actually let someone in the house to do an investigation and fingers crossed we'll find out who the ghost is who haunts the Aintree home. The other case that I came across which is eerily similar to that of Dan and Jessica's case is the case of the bride who was seen floating through a building site at 2 a.m. In August 2020, Adam Lees, the owner of a security business, was keeping an eye on a property in Birmingham City Centre in the UK. At around 1.54, the motion sensors went off on the building site and Adam went to see what the commotion was. He had a look on his laptop at the live feed stream onto the building site and he got the fright of his life, he probably pooped his pants, I'm not gonna lie, I think I would. When he seen this image of a woman floating past, levitating, if you will, past the building site, he then got his guards to go and have a look. Security guards checked the area thoroughly, but there was no sign of breaking and entering onto the site, and there was no woman who had accidentally stumbled onto the site during the night. Adam Lees, like Darren in the story before, is a very manly man. He's a, quite a skeptic. He doesn't believe in the supernatural, but he said since the incident, he's not been able to sleep and he can't get the image out of his mind. He said he can't bring himself to really go to the site at night, and he's always that a little bit careful when he's opening his laptop at night. So who is she? We'll never know. The fascination with ghost brides isn't something that's terribly new. It has spanned through generations and it even picked up more interest back in 2019 when the movie Annabelle Comes Home was released. Now you guys know I've got the worst feed of dolls so I won't dive into this too much, okay? But if you've not seen the movie, I do warn you, spoiler alert, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you some bits about it. So if you've not seen it yet and you want to watch it, Annabelle Comes Home, we're gonna discuss it right now. So in the movie, it's based around Ed and Lorraine Warren, famed ghost hunters, and the two were paranormal investigators who also own an occult museum in their home of Connecticut. However, they have since passed away. Rest in peace, I love their stuff. And if you've not read their book, The Demonologist, please give it a read, it's super spooky. Maybe read it when you're on a flight, not in your own home, just for that extra bit of safety. 
But yeah, their work is world renowned and one of the cases that they cover is the case of Annabelle, which is a haunted doll or a possessed doll doll and in the movie it's basically based around the fact that the Warren's young daughter is being babysat by two young girls and one of the girls decides to unlock this room with all these occult artifacts that have been either haunted, possessed or have been involved in a home with a haunting or possession. Now one of the items that features in the movie is a wedding dress and it has the story attached to it in the movie that the wearer of the gown will become intoxicated with rage and she will kill her husband on the day of her wedding and once the murder has been and gone she's done her bit the dress then goes back to its complete pristine condition as it was before so if there's blood on it it's completely erased if there's rips on it they heal themselves and the gown then disappears no one knows where it goes after the murders and it ends up in some sort of thrift shop or designer shop and another bride then wears the gown with that horrible fate ahead of her. It says in the movie that seven men befell this horrible fate before Ed and Lorraine Warren stepped in and took the gown into their own possession to have it blessed. However, Tony Spira, who is actually the curator of the museum now since the Warrens passed, he's actually their son-in-law. He's married to their daughter, Judy, and he says that there is no such dress with that history. He said there is a white gown in the occult museum and it is attached with a kind of veil but he said that it's nothing to do with those kind of crimes those crimes didn't happen in his mind and that is actually attached to the white lady of union cemetery also in connecticut it's always connecticut isn't it sorry if you live in connecticut you're never going to sleep tonight but like legit it's like the green lady connecticut the haunting in connecticut obviously connecticut the haunting at lindley street connecticut where won't i be moving Connecticut. Actually, if you're from that area, please let us know. Have you got any haunting stories? Do you have any family from the area and they've told you things about their house that aren't quite right? Let us know in the comments. But back to the white lady. So she has quite a muddy kind of past. There's not much known about the white lady. However, from 1940 onwards, there has been sightings of this young woman, a beautiful young woman wearing a white wedding gown. She's either got a veil or she doesn't have a veil. It's not really consistent, but she's often seen exiting Union Cemetery and going on to the main road. She's been seen getting into cabs, she's been seen in the passenger seat of someone's car, she's also been seen to jump in front of the car and actually go through the car as she's been hit. Some people actually said that she's managed to solidify herself so that when people hit her it feels like they're actually knocking down a real live woman but then when they get out of the car to investigate there's no one there. Several people have actually called police because they think that they are a perpetrator of a hit and run and then the police just say, nah, nah, nah. Just the white lady. We know her, she's fine. People have even seen her levitating above Route 59 before she's seen a car driving past slowly or perhaps stop on the side of the road and she just gets in the car. She's like, driver, McDonald's, I'm starving, I need a cheeseburger. Ed and Lorraine Warren actually investigated the case of the Union Cemetery white lady, trying to figure out who she was and what her story was, but not even these amazing paranormal investigators could get to the bottom of who she was. There's a lot of theories as to who she could be. There is theories that she is a woman who murdered her lover on the morning of her wedding day. There's also rumors that she's a woman who died in childbirth and her wedding gown was what she was buried in. There's also a rumour that she was set to marry someone that she didn't love and her lover, who she was in love with, was so enraged with jealousy that he actually drowned her in the nearby river in her wedding gown. But if we're playing devil's advocate, it does seem very strange that she's always obsessed with like getting in a car or getting hit by a car. Is it possible she was on her way to maybe elope with her lover and she was hit by a car next to the Union Cemetery? What do you think? Who is the white lady? Ed Warren is now buried, God rest his soul, in a completely different cemetery than where she was normally seen. However, in the last few years, she's actually been seen floating around Stepney Cemetery, where he is now buried. Maybe she wanted to give him the answer of who she was in the afterlife. Maybe now he holds all the answers that we've been searching for for decades. Who knows? 
But guys, we need to remember that it's not just modern pop culture that has made this a fashionable phenomenon. There's been a great interest in ghostly brides dating way back to BC. And this was in the form of the Chinese tradition of ghost brides. Now, if any of you guys have watched the program Ghost Brides on Netflix, it is a subtitles and a lot of people have said that the representation of the people and the race at the time it's a little bit sketchy. But I'm just saying the premise of the show, not the language used and the makeup and the actors themselves, because a lot of people have been a little bit a little bit offended. Is that great? But I like the premise of it. I like the idea and I actually didn't even know about Ghost Brides and the traditions that it held until I saw this programme and I was like, oh, Ghost Brides, what's that? Because I don't mind the subtitle. It really doesn't bother me. And this is where the fascination for me kind of started about filming this episode because the term ghost bride has been used throughout history in Chinese and other Asian communities where a young woman or man are tied to a deceased person and their spirit so that they do not bring shame on their family for dying young or older if they were like an old maid for dying unmarried basically and it was more popular for women to become ghost brides because if a woman was an old maid or maybe a lesbian it gave her a reason to then be married without the stigma of remaining unmarried because she's married to a ghost so she doesn't need to do anything. The Chinese believe that as a woman if your spirit passes over at a certain age if you are unmarried it brings shame onto the family which Obviously, probably not so much now. It's, it's still a thing now. I've heard recent cases of women marrying their ghost husbands if they've been in love with someone and they pass away and they don't want them to go into the next life without them, then they will exchange vows with their spirit and that way when they go over to paradise or heaven it means that they're not having to vie for another suitor's attention. With women the rules kind of vary so women who are married to ghost husbands so men who are no longer with us they have to stay unmarried because they are already wed and they are never allowed to share a bed with another man. They can however in some cultures get with the deceased brother have a baby and that baby will be known as the deceased man's child because it's the same DNA. I think that's how it works. Whereas men can marry a ghost bride, a young woman who has passed away, and they will do the whole dowry thing as if it's totally a real wedding. And then what will happen is he will be allowed to get with other women. He's not allowed to marry other women, but he can get with other women, have children with another woman, and they will be seen as his and that woman's legitimate children, no affiliation to the deceased woman. So, already is a wee bitty sexist undertone but we'll let that slide. So this program on Netflix is a woman who is approached by this family to become a ghost bride for their son who has passed away and he starts communicating with her. There's so many different stories and one of the most kind of weird stories that I've ever heard was actually not that long ago and I don't know if it's a Chinese urban legend, maybe it's one of those ones like we had before with the kind of babysitter man upstairs or with the guy in the back seat of your car. I think it might be maybe one of those or maybe it's just like an old wife's tale and it holds quite a lot of significance for the Chinese community, I'm not sure. So this story itself begins with a young woman and she is happy, living her best life, when she starts to have dreams about a man and the man's trying to talk to her in her dreams and trying to kind of gain a friendship with her. She's not really interested at first in communicating with the man. The first couple of dreams she kind of puts up with him and entertains him and then after a while she starts dreaming about him every single night or every Every time she's napping. Her sister says that it's probably just her imagination and that it's probably something psychological that's keeping her dreaming about this man but she's quite frightened about it. Eventually as the dreams progress the two actually build a friendship and eventually she starts to grow feelings for the man. So she fancies this dude in her dreams and then one day when her family go into her room to awaken her she will not wake up. They get a doctor to the house and the doctor confirms that she has died in her sleep. Now this is when her sister 
starts talking and she says that in her diary there's a lot of entries about this ghost husband a man who allegedly passed away and he was asking her to be with him in this other life and that he fell in love with her he proposed when she was asleep and she agreed and she agreed to transfer herself over to his world so they could be together forever now in this story her mum and dad like aren't that fast like they're super happy and they throw a big massive celebration because at least she never died alone but I actually really find that culture super interesting like the fact that they could have this like till death do us part but not quite it's really interesting to me and I can kind of see why some people might do it if you're totally in love with someone and then they're snatched away so young maybe you don't want to be with anyone else maybe you can't picture your life with someone else but they can be quite deadly there's also a kind of sinister side to these rituals in which if a young woman who's not got a lot of family standing and not got a great deal of money behind her sometimes the boys family will actually put the girl to death and then give her family money in exchange for this marriage so that she can travel to the other side and be with their son. Now this is something that's very controversial. I don't and I would hope it doesn't happen nowadays but the term ghost bride is definitely something that's still heard within the Asian community and it holds a lot of significance for Asian families. I'll do that to my boyfriend except I'll have like the girls rules and I'll say if I die you never meet anyone else because I'd find you. I'm just kidding by the way if anything ever happens to him it totally wasn't me like ah, I would not do well in jail. Do we have any of you guys who are a member of these kind of communities and you've heard of stories throughout your family of ghost brides? Do you know anyone who's been a ghost bride and lived to tell the tale? Do let us know because I find it really interesting. Like I love stuff like that. I don't know if that makes me a weirdo but I do really like stuff like that and hearing about different cultures and I think it's quite cool to think of it quite old worldly. Like a lot of people said it was like BC so like before Christ was even meant to be floating about. So yeah it's quite interesting isn't it to think of perhaps being tied to someone forever and have it be like properly forever. So what are your guys thoughts on this week's episode? Do you feel like this is something that could be true? Do you believe Adam Lees who saw the ghostly apparition move across his computer screen at the building site in Birmingham? Do you believe Darren and Jessica who swear that they saw a ghost bride on their CCTV doggy cam? Or do you think it's just someone looking for a fast buck who's just looking to get themselves in the headlines? There is obviously motives people could have. Maybe Adam Lees wants to get a security firm out there and what better way to get them in the papers than supernatural i don't really know though because i mean that was quite a scary one i mean let's just refresh y'all's memory like who do i fake that one up i hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode and i hope my drunk malibu induced ramblings weren't too scary for you i just want to say a big thank you to everyone who has joined my channel who's hit subscribe it really means the world to me seriously i know i harp on about it but it really really does the fact that i see little spikes in certain videos it gets me all excited and i'm really really loving what i'm doing for you guys remember make sure you tune in on friday where we will discuss a new true crime case and this one's so super spooky and that will be on Friday. I post at 3 p.m. GMT time in the UK so please watch. I'll also be here for you every Wednesday with our Weirdo Wednesdays where we'll pick spooky supernatural stories, maybe a conspiracy theory, maybe something about aliens and everything in between. So give this video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it and also hit that notification bell so you don't miss me because I miss you when you're not here and you're not turning up and you're naughty. Remember to follow me on Instagram at Megan True Crime. I also have a TikTok page at Megan.TrueCrime. So it's a goodbye from me on this happy hump day. And remember, be safe and always check your security cams. Maybe don't actually, unless you want to see some ghostly ladies. Bye!